What is going on guys, Coach Joe here at the Lion's Den and this is gonna be day four of my current programming block. I'm putting out day by day what I've been doing for this block and then I'm going to release the program for you guys to try it. You know, maybe it'll work for you, maybe it won't, but if you're interested to see what I do, uh, you can watch these videos and then if you wanna try it, you can get that program, it's gonna be a limited time offer. But I wanna get back to doing a different format video where I'm just sitting in the office, going through the video footage, uh, giving you guys some thoughts on what I'm doing, why I'm doing it. So let's dive right in onto the training session. Oh, make sure you meet Bob, subscribe to the channel, okay? Go down there, click subscribe, give the video a thumbs up and share it with all your friends and your family, especially your grandparents, because they need to be jacked and old. All right, day four is primarily going to be a pulling and pressing day. So the first movement on our list is going to be trap bar deadlifts. And we actually did trap bar deadlifts in the previous uh, training block, but we did low handle trap bar deadlifts. So it just made the movement harder because we're pulling uh, from a lower position. So all you have to do is flip the handles upside down. And if you guys didn't know that, there are two handle options on trap bars, typically a high handle, uh, which is the regular handle that most people will pull from, and then the low handle if you just flip the bar over. So. In this block, we went back to high handle. Uh, and honestly, just talking to my training partners and I, we've just been really enjoying the trap bar. And we also like it because we're not doing tons of squatting and leg work, uh, but this allows us to kind of get that hybrid in of a pull and a little bit of leg as well. Because when you do the trap bar, you're using those quads a little bit more than you typically would uh, for a conventional deadlift. So I just think there's a nice carryover there. And like I said, overall, it motivates us to train more because we like the movement. So for the rep scheme for this, we had five at seven, five at eight, five at nine. And for those of you asking what I mean by five at seven, five at eight, five at nine, is where you're doing five reps in a at an RPE seven, five reps at an RPE eight, and five reps at an RPE nine. So if you don't know a lot about RPE, I would suggest watching Alan Thrall's videos or even Calgary Barbell. They have some great videos out on RPE training and I'll put them in the link um, down below in the description. Uh, but you can also watch some of the stuff I've put out. But that is just what I mean when I say that. I know there's been some confusion in the comments. So hopefully it's gonna make more sense when you guys look further into that. Just a way to regulate uh, and manage and measure our intensity uh, for our training. Now getting into these trap bar deadlifts, right away off the bat, I remember telling my training partners that I felt great. And the reason I felt great is because the week previous to this, I took a low stress week. So I'll put the link up here for what a low stress week is, but basically some people do deloads. I do a low stress week, which is just letting my body recover uh, while I'm still training, okay? And I'm actually hitting some heavier weights, but I'm reducing the volume. So I was feeling recovered and that's exactly the point of what that low stress week was gonna be. And while I was making my jumps in the trap bar, and it was also a higher uh, point in the trap bar, I thought I was gonna move some good weight, and that's exactly what ended up happening with my last set. So, you know, just kind of doing plate jumps here. You know, I, I do do a deadlift warm up, which I'll put another link uh, above for you guys to check out my deadlift warm up. You can do that if you wish to. Uh, but for the trap bar, just, you know, threw on a plate on each side, and then just kept jumping up uh, to get into my working sets. Now, my first working set ended up actually being uh, 650. So 650 for a set of five, it felt great. Uh, and on this day, typically, I don't really wanna wear a belt or straps, uh, which I do end up doing towards the end. Reason being is one, because my hands started tearing. And if my hands tear, then it kind of keeps me from training at the intensity and the pace that I want to. So I will throw on straps uh, on some of the top sets if I need to, to prevent my hands from tearing. And then I also don't like wearing a belt on the second pull variation day, just to help manage fatigue a little bit. Um, but I did go big today and I figured, you know what, throw the belt on, throw the straps on, gear up. It was my decision to make. You know, you can do whatever you want, uh, but it ended up being a great call for me in this uh, training session. So did the 650, felt good, bumped up to uh, 670 for a set of five, and that felt really good as well. And I kind of was going back and forth uh, with my training partners on what would be the next move to make. And I was thinking, you know, do I play conservative and maybe go 685, 690? But then once I was throwing those numbers around, you know, now we're in the ballpark at 700. And 700 is a nice number uh, for, to hit for a set of five. Uh, I haven't really hit it for reps in the past and I haven't really done much trap bar work. So I wanted to push the throttle a bit uh, and, you know, put 700 on the bar for my last set. And I smoked that uh, for a set of five. <laughs> I'm 
just overall really stoked for my performance as well as my training partners during that day. The intensity was high, uh, which just can help, you know, the uh, performance for the training day. So if you got good music blaring, and you have people that are hyping you up and cheering you on and they're doing well, it's definitely gonna have an effect on how you do for that training session uh, and maybe change the RPE a little bit for that day. So, you know, went for it, went big, had a blast. Uh, DK was killing it, he hit 700 for a set of five, which I knew he was very well capable of. And to be honest with you guys, there was plenty of room left in the tank. Uh, but for me, that was a good training day, you know, rep PR with an implement that I haven't used much. So decided to call it there and then do uh, our back down set. So typically when we do our back down set, we just repeat whatever we did for the five at RPE seven. Uh, so that would have been the 650 for me. So we went back down to 650 and hit that for a nice set of five. Now, as the weeks continue, those back off sets uh, are going to become more than just one set. So this week it was just one set for the back off, but next week it's probably gonna be two sets on the back off. So we're accumulating that volume uh, and trying to get a good uh, strength adaptation as we increase the volume, okay? And eventually that'll lead to fatigue, then that's when you wanna throw in those low stress weeks or deload weeks, whatever, when you notice that the performance is starting to drop and you're getting that systemic fatigue. So just some thought process behind why we're doing what we're doing, uh, but overall, great session. Hopefully you guys enjoyed watching those lifts and uh, I, I felt great and I'm looking forward to seeing what happens down the road with uh, this trap bar and my strength in general. Second lift of the day was the Z press. Now, we are fully naming it the Zeke press in the lion's den because of my dog, Zeke, that's why. <laughs> some people on Instagram are like, why the heck is he, is he calling it the Zeke press? I've never heard of that. Guys, I'm making a joke, okay? It's my dog, I love him to death. So I figured let's let the legacy live on. Let's call it the Zeke press, all right? So did the Z press, and the reason that we did the Z press is because this is our third pressing day, and I actually press four times a week, so on the fifth day I do throw in more pressing, uh, but for this day, the Z press is a nice variation that allows you to hold yourself back uh, from going super heavy and accumulating a little bit too much fatigue. Because you're cutting off that whole lower portion of your body, your stability is going to be a lot tougher than if you were doing a strict press or a push press or any of the other main pressing variations. Uh, so you just can't go as heavy. So for the RPE for this, we were doing eight reps at RP7 across the board for three sets. So just picking a weight uh, you know, that felt let's just say medium to a little bit heavier. Uh, and there was gonna be a challenge, but nothing that we were failing or having issues with, but still could get a good stimulus. Uh, so for me and uh, DK, that was uh, 165, okay? We've done a lot more in the past, but since this is our third day, we are accumulating fatigue throughout the week. So 165 felt good for us to do for our three sets of eight. And honestly, it's a movement that we haven't done a lot uh, throughout our training. So that's why we threw it in there. It's something new, it's a, a novel stimulus to us, uh, which we're hoping that's gonna give us a good strength adaptation while also keeping that overall fatigue lower. So you can always overload a movement, right? Uh, but you can also auto-regulate the intensity and, the, and manage the fatigue more by picking a variation such as the Z press where you can't go as heavy. So, you know, just if you're trying to press more and you're increasing your frequency in any lifts, play with those variations, understand what those variations are for, and that will allow you to increase the frequency without banging yourself up too much and running into a wall early on. And I will say on top of that, our uh, hip flexors, our quads, and our hamstrings are starting to cramp up a little bit because we haven't been in that position in a while. So it just added a, a whole new experience to our training, uh, but we were having a blast. We, you know, we were kind of uh, making jokes in between sets, keeping it fun. And it felt good to do that movement. You know, I was feeling it in parts of my upper back, my shoulders, uh, you know, like in my hip flexors and, and places that I haven't felt before, which is, is good for me, knowing that I'm putting in something new that's going to force a new adaptation. Now, the last accessory movement uh, that we had done, so typically uh, we try to get in one to two accessory movements in per session. So for this one, we did wide grip lat pull downs. Uh, so we were cranking these babies out, uh, doing sets of uh, 15 reps at RP7. Overall, just trying to get a good back pump, that wide grip hit the lats uh, specifically. And obviously, if you've been in strength training, you know, a strong back is gonna be a huge base to that pyramid of strength. So. You know, we're doing all sorts of variations to strengthen our back throughout the week. And this is typically more of like a bodybuilder exercise, but it is a tail end of the week. So we don't want to be throwing in, you know, huge, large compound movements that are going to fatigue us a ton unless we modify that variation. So the lat pull down is one, something I really love and enjoy doing. Uh, it makes me feel good. It motivates me to train. And two, uh, it's a way for me to get more volume in for my back and increase my back strength long term. So that's why we do it. Uh, three sets, like I said, 15 reps, RPE7, very simple. 
And then after that, we just hit on our, our, uh, our arms uh, pretty hard. So we'll, we've been doing arms for the last two and a half years now, I think every Friday uh, at the lion's den. And typically it's kind of just a cultural thing that's, that's fun to do here. We sometimes throw on really weird playlists and just, you know, do tons of reps. And, and honestly, it's just more about the experience at this point. And it feels good if our biceps do grow uh, and our triceps grow as well. But uh, for this, we just picked two supersets. Uh, I'm, I'm only putting one of the supersets on the, the video footage, but typically we'll pick two, uh, one of a bicep exercise, one of a tricep exercise. We'll go anywhere from, let's say 12 to 15 reps with each exercise and we'll just superset back and forth for three total rounds, sometimes four, uh, really just trying to get tons of blood to the muscle, get a good training stimulus. So for this, uh, we were just doing some alternating curls and then we were doing some tricep push-outs, very basic for today. Uh, and then we just did another superset, which I think was uh, some tricep kickouts, basically what we did in the Matt Wenning video. If you guys haven't seen that, I'll link it up here, but check that video out when we train with him. I really liked uh, those like kickouts that we did for our triceps. And then the other bicep was just a cable curl uh, with just a straight bar from the cable uh, machine. And we just crank those out back and forth. So basically all we're trying to do is have a little bit of fun, make sure our arms are smoked by the end of the session. There are smaller muscle groups. So uh, we're gonna be able to recover pretty quickly and we don't really do much uh, with them throughout the weekend. And then by the time Monday rolls around, we're back on our day one, we're feeling pretty good and ready to hit it hard. So that's kind of the gist of day four. Like I said, it's gonna be a pulling and a pressing day for the most part. A couple accessory movements. Uh, overall, session's about 90 minutes, okay, hour and a half. So get in, get it done, and then get the heck out. So hopefully you guys have been enjoying uh, this training series where I walk you through each day of my training. Like I said, we'll, we'll let the program out for you guys to try it on your own uh, once I have that together. So be on the lookout for that. The fifth day is gonna be our typical uh, athletic training day, uh, similar to what we did with John Meadows. So if you want to know what that is, basically it's the same exact thing we've been doing with John Meadows, but we just do some different exercise variations to play around with more of the jumping and explosive movements. But there's always that main squat movement uh, for four reps of all the exercises. We typically do four or five rounds through everything. Uh, so I would suggest watching that video to see what we do for that fifth session. And then on the tail end, we throw in some bench pressing and a little bit more accessory work uh, just to get everything hit completely throughout the week. Uh, but I'll probably release that video down the road uh, just because we have a couple more days until I'll hit that training day uh, where we have the time frame. But if you want the sneak peek, just go watch the John Meadows leg training video. And that's gonna be pretty much what we've been doing. Uh, and it's very custom tailored to however you wanna do it. So as long as you have a squat variation and then you have a couple explosive movements, you go through it four to five rounds, you're gonna have your day five and then we're resting two days out of the week. For us, typically it's gonna be a Wednesday and a Sunday. So we go Monday, Tuesday on, Wednesday off, Thursday, Friday, Saturday on, and then Sunday off. So make it work for your schedule, uh, but that is the overall gist. So make sure, like I said in the beginning of the video, you smash the subscribe button, you give this a thumbs up, you try these exercises out. Give me any feedback in the comments section. What do you guys think about these exercises? What do you like? What don't you like? I'm down for discussion. And uh, that's pretty much it. We have some great collabs coming up in the future. Uh, we got Juji Mufu, I'm pretty sure on tap, where he's actually coming here and I'm going there, or vice versa. But we're gonna be at both each other's places. Uh, some stuff with the RP crew coming up. Um, just a lot of good collabs, a lot of knowledge, information. I'm trying to consistently learn and take you guys through this journey. So I really appreciate it, guys. I think I have a jujitsu comp uh, recap coming up, as you can see, my face is a little messed up here. My ear is permanently damaged for the rest of my life, badge of honor. But until then, guys, stay a lean, mean strength machine. Peace.